In an earlier video, I introduced you to the tools that are available for you to use in Photoshop. Beginning with this video, we're actually going to go through the tool panel and take a deeper look at many of the tools that are available to us. There's a few that we aren't going to cover just because it's likely you would never use them in a design setting, but there's quite a few that you will use in some cases on a regular daily basis. The first of those tools that we're going to take a look at are the marquee tools and you'll notice that it's number two on the tool palette over here. And with the marquee tools we have a number of selections. We have the rectangular marquee tool, elliptical, we also have the uh, single row uh, marquee tool and the single column marquee tool. And I'm primarily going to focus on the rectangular and the elliptical marquee tool because those are the two that you're likely going to use the most. First of all, with the with either of the uh, marquee tools, whether it's rectangular or the elliptical, if you want to uh, use that, which simply the way it works is to left mouse click and drag, and it will create a marquee. You can see. <laughs> by what some people refer to as the marching ants. It defines the area that you've just selected. And uh, normally, just by left mouse clicking and dragging, you can create a marquee tool selection however you draw it. But if you hold the shift key down, whether you're a Mac or a PC user, it'll constrain the proportions to a square if you're using the rectangular marquee tool or to a circle if you're using the elliptical marquee tool. Now normally if you're not holding the shift key down with the elliptical tool you will you can again create an, um, a selection that isn't perfectly round. You know so if you want to create an oval or something like that then you would not want to hold the shift key down. Now the selection tools here have a number of uses depending on what you're after and a uh, couple things that I want to point out here is that with as we move forward in looking at these tools it's always a good idea to not work on your original layer either make a copy of an image that you're working on or a graphic or just create a new layer like for instance let's say that we're working with this tomato photo here and we wanted to use it as the background image for say a PowerPoint slide or something like that and I wanted to uh, ghost out the center part of the photograph here because that's where we're going to enter the text of our PowerPoint presentation. Well, the marquee, uh, rectangular marquee tool is the tool that we would want to use for that. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is actually create a new layer by clicking on the, the uh, little button down here next to the trash can in the layers panel. And it creates a new blank layer then I would make sure that my rectangular marquee tool is selected and I'm just going to left click and drag I'm kind of eyeballing it here so that all the borders are roughly the same okay and so now I have a selection that represents what I just created with the rectangular marquee tool so now I have options. I can fill this with a color, like let's say I wanted to fill it with um, a cream color, uh, just by clicking on the foreground image here, which is the green uh, button in this particular case. Um, I can use the eyedropper tool that comes with the color picker and choose a color right off of the photograph. One that, you know, perhaps I like that one there, or maybe use something like that or I could just randomly pick a color as well so I'll click OK and then with the layer 1 selected and we're going to get into layers a lot more in a future video but with layer 1 selected I can uh, choose edit fill I want to make sure that I choose foreground color because that's the color that has our um, pink color you also have other options, background color, color, content aware, pattern history, and so on. But you're primarily going to use foreground color most of the time. Blending mode, normally you would leave at normal, and opacity you would normally leave at 100% because you can adjust those independently 
on the layer itself. So I'm going to click OK. And it fills it with that color. Now, um, you'll notice that the marquee uh, selection is still active because the little marching men are still marching around. And you can choose to leave it active or you can deselect it. Now, the simplest way to deselect it, you have a couple options. One is to just click outside the image area where that isn't where it isn't selected, and that'll deselect it. Another option is to hit Control or Command D, which is deselect, and that'll take care of it as well. Okay. Now, with this image, you'll notice that it's solid. Okay, this pink color is solid. If we come over here to the um, to the layer panel to where it says opacity if I start dragging the slider to the left you'll notice that now we can see uh, just a little bit of the tomatoes through our background okay now let me show you another option that you can use the rectangular marquee tool the exact same way except to get a different effect Okay, so I'm going to uh, choose a smaller rectangular area. Um, the same will work if you use the, ellip uh, the elliptical marquee tool. So I'm going to pick, say, this area right here. And instead of creating a new layer and filling it with a color, what I'm going to do is actually with the background selected, which is where the tomato photo is, I'm going to um, copy, which is Control or Command C. And I'm going to just paste right into um, what's already there, which is Control or Command V. And you'll notice if you look over here in the layer panel that it uh, copied the selection that I had created from the background and created a new layer whenever I paste it. And you notice that the selection is no longer active. Okay. Now, a little side note, side trick. If you want to make this selection active again, if you hold the command or the control key down and click, notice how the hand tool becomes a marquee tool. So if I hold the command or control key down, depending on whether your PC or Mac, and click on that layer, it automatically reselects that um, area. Okay, so you might think, well, what's the benefit of that? Because it looks exactly the same. Well. Once you have this um, new layer created that you selected with the rectangular marquee tool, you have a lot of options. Like, for instance, let's say we wanted to shift the color of the tomatoes. We could very easily uh, bring up our hue uh, panel, which is uh, Command U or Control U. And if I do that, You'll see we bring up hue and saturation and now with this layer selected this new one that we created from the uh, rectangular marquee tool i can move the hue slider and it shifts the color of the tomatoes so like if i wanted to make them green tomatoes or something like that i can do so and if that's a little too bright for me i can turn the saturation down That's actually pretty darn close to looking like green tomatoes. And then I can just hit OK. And so now, uh, just from the rectangular marquee tool that we used, we're able to uh, completely change and give this a different look. OK. Um, the same thing can be true with using the um, elliptical marquee tool. Okay, just to give you a brief example, I can create a, just a, an oval or a circle like this. And by the way, um, if you need to move this, uh, your selection once you've created it, while it's active, if you left mouse click and drag, you can move it around your image without it affecting um, anything underneath it okay so like I could um, select the background layer again and uh, create a new layer well actually you know what let's let's do this let's um, make a copy of the tomato 
and paste it just like we did before except this time what we're going to do is we're going to change the color um, a little bit but we're going to use a different method to to change it remember previously under image we looked at the different adjustments and we had replace color and so what I'm going to do is with just this selection I'm going to choose the red and I'm going to hold the shift key down or we could choose the eyedropper with the plus and select all the different areas of the red until it all looks solid okay and I'm just gonna move the slider down just a little bit to make sure that I'm just getting mostly the tomato okay now the cool thing is that I can essentially do the same thing that I did with you but I have a little bit more control because I'm only focusing on one specific color and that's the red so now if I shift the hue it's it's only affecting the red of the tomato and and you would actually be able to see this better let's delete that and uh, let's just select this portion here okay and now we'll bring up adjustments replace color and the reason why I went with this is because we have the green here okay so now I want to choose just the red and um, let's add to the selection here a little bit and we can increase the fuzziness a little bit because we don't want to select the um, the green area we just want the red because remember we're just replacing that Okay, so now if I start to shift the color, you notice that the, the stem itself is pretty much remaining the same, but I can change that part of the tomato to anything that I want. So it's an easy way of selecting an area um, that we can then use together with other tools like the adjustment tools or on a layer or something like that. Another great benefit of working with the marquee tools is if we wanted to build an image from scratch just using geometric shapes. So like if I, um, let me just create a new layer here and we're going to fill it with white. Choose edit, fill, foreground color. And then I could use the uh, marquee tool to build up different elements of this area. Like if I wanted to create shapes, like for instance, if we were creating a book cover or a label design or something like that, just by simply using the marquee tool, we can create some really cool graphic areas and do some interesting things with it. Uh, another thing that I should point out at this stage with selection is the keystroke command um, control A or command A selects the entire frame so like if i choose uh control a it selects all okay which is kind of like the rectangular marquee tool except that it's just a keystroke command so let's say now that we wanted to create an area over here on the right i'm just going to draw something quick say right here and we want to fill it with blue you know we could come over here and sample a blue that'll work and we'll choose uh, edit fill foreground color and you notice that I came over here to the color picker instead of clicking on the foreground color you can really work either way it, it depends on what you know what's most comfortable for you um, and then I can create another layer we'll deselect that selection and I could create another layer that perhaps if we select this area and I want to maybe pick a nice yellow with edit fill and deselect and so you can see where we can build some very basic uh, shapes create an elliptical tool and uh, I'm gonna start like here and just 
drag it here and then reposition this like so. And by the way, you can also use the directional arrows on your keyboard to move it. So if I use the right arrow, it'll move the selection to the right or the left up and down. Okay. And then let's say we go with a darker color, maybe something like that. And I'm going to select, create another layer, edit, fill, click OK. And so you can see where um, we're building up some basic design elements just using the marquee tool. Okay, and then we can apply special effects and all that kind of stuff, drop shadows and glows and all those kinds of fun things to it later, which we'll get into in a later video when we're looking at layers. But I just wanted to show what's available to you now, just with the um, elliptical and the rectangular marquee tool. Next, we're going to look at the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool.